The environment of a game is what surrounds the player's character and is a stage to the design narrative and gameplay experiences that will emerge to the player. So a game's environment should not just be about creating some physical space for the character to only exist in. Instead, it should be more about creating a believable environment that justifies and further empowers the narrative experience striped to be conveyed through the game. And it doesn't take a thorough game analyzer to make out a merely playable environment from an immersive and lively one. Even a casual gamer can make out that difference because an immersive environment is felt and it feels real and meaningful. So how do you do this? How do you create an immersive environment and not just a lifeless backdrop that only pretends to be immersive? Well, there may be a thousand ways to do this, but this is how the prologue to Life is Strange 2, The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit did it. And it did it through relevant instances of meaningful interaction with its environmental setting. And the whole game is based on this mechanic of non-linear interactive exploration to also uncover the narrative backstory of this small family and learn about their sad and affecting history. Now, I know the whole Life is Strange series is based on this exploratory mechanic, but Captain Spirit just hits differently. And maybe it hits differently because every choice of interaction is relevant, meaningful, and not overdone. Because you want to enclose the player in a meaningfully interactive environment, but not exhaust them by abundant instances of non-relevant interaction. Excessive choice of interactions will only clutter the screen and quickly tire the player of the idea of interacting with the environment. Stories can also be told through the environment itself, without any interaction between it and the player. Environmental storytelling is when you convey deeper stories through narratively designed environments and specific placement of its inhabiting objects and characters. But I also think interaction takes it a step further. Not an interaction that merely states the obvious that the player has already figured out, but one that further rewards the player's attention to detail with additional relevant information. For example, when you walk into the dad's room in Captain Spirit and notice this bottle of perfume, had there been no option to interact, there is only so much you can assume about it. Maybe you won't even pay much attention. But when you do interact with it, I'm glad Dad kept Mom's perfume. It smells just like her. You learn it is the character's mother's bottle of perfume that his dad has still kept after his mother's passing. The dialogue also reminds us of the sensory feeling of having a perfume around, especially one that smells of someone you love but isn't around anymore. The interaction makes the existence of this perfume bottle more personal and relatable. Now, simply adding interaction to any environment and its objects will not do the trick. Interacting with the perfume bottle creates a personal feeling here because it is meaningful to the narrative experience. And that is the key word here, meaningful. The environment of Captain Spirit feels immersive because there is meaning to almost everything that exists in it. Most objects don't exist only because they look cool or are expected to exist, but because they add to the narrative experience and are born out of it in the first place. Take for example the trophies and the photos on the shelf. They don't exist only to fill up the space and make it look like an occupied shelf, but they really exist as a reminiscing memory of what the dad's life was like once, chasing his dreams and building up more bigger ones. The meaning in these trophies and photos get deeper when you see what is left of this once motivated man who surely couldn't make it bigger. Still watching a basketball game, chain smoking and drinking down to battle the reality of having lost a wife he really loved. The design of Captain Spirit's environment and the placement of the objects inhabiting it are already done meaningfully and the touch of interaction then only adds to the experience. And you'd be wrong if you believe only story-driven games might want to aim for an immersive environment because a genre as opposite as fighting games have evolved to embrace the touch of interaction to add life to their environments and keep them away from only feeling like backdrops behind the stage. 
Another thing that adds to the immersion of Captain Spirit's environment are the minor choices of interaction, like the option to shoot the dad with a toy gun, do the dishes, the laundry, play with the scattered toys, or even make instant pasta for the dad. You might choose to interact with a few of these choices and not with the others. And these minor choices don't really affect the game much at all, but do create a sense of freedom and realism. They make the experience even more immersive when you choose to do something and another NPC acknowledges your act of choice. It's just like the freedom you have to interact with most of the things in your surrounding but may choose not to. Also, do not overlook the environment design of Captain Spirit that is very believable to begin with. Finding car keys under the sofa, the indoor drying rack, or the hanging garage keys beside the kitchen door make sense and feel authentic. This only goes on to validate that the goal of object placement should not just be to merely fill up the environment, but also make sense. If the environment is not believable or convincing enough, the player will surely pick up on the awkwardness. Chances are, you might have not played this game, and as you watch this video, you might think that the environment looks pretty ordinary and usual. But merely looking at a game's environment is never enough to judge it or understand it. It is only by playing and experiencing it that you get a feel for it and learn how deep or shallow the environment really is. Now, I understand that not every game can be or should be rendered interactively explorative. And I am also not saying that interaction is the only way for an immersive environment. But Captain Spirit here surely managed to create an immersive environment through interactive exploration, not to mention the good work of environment design to begin with. And that feeling of immersion is not something that exists independently and cannot be worked upon directly. It is just something that comes to be when many minor aspects of an overall good design work together to achieve it. The feeling itself is invisible, but surely loud and evident when felt. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you have anything to add, please write it down in the comments. Also, consider subscribing for similar video essays on game design. I am Tushar Deb. see you in the next one.